Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into things. A podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 158, Shyness. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my upbeat and positive co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How you doing today, Maddie? I'm all right. How about you? I'm doing okay. So the holidays are over. We're getting back into the swing of things. We kind of shut the studio down unplanned for the, uh, the holiday. I wasn't even doing any of our restreams. Uh, we unfortunately did not get a chance to put out a holiday special this year. Uh, just th things just caught up with us, I think, you know. So we're getting back into the swing of things. Um, we've got <clears throat> a pretty large slate of shows actually lined up right now. Yep. Uh, we've got through, was, this is 158, we're through 168 now. So we've got an additional 10 shows already prepped and ready to go. And I'm planning on making two more. And you've got two more that you're working on. Um, so yeah, we should have a pretty productive 2023. Yep. I have to get used to that now. Hmm. Uh, I had an incident today at work where I had to sign a document and I was still putting 2022. So it's going to take me about three months to break that habit. Thankfully, I've actually, like, surprisingly, I am, I'm not really having that issue. I did, unfortunately, mix up January, the January day. I did the third today, even though it's the fourth. Oh, uh, well, that's not too bad. At least you got the year right. So anything exciting going on at school to talk about? Um... Not really. We're back in school after a wonderful 10-day break. Wonderful, huh? I mean, it That's was... That's a sign of someone who loves school. Mm. <laughs> and, like, my friend Aaron specifically today was, like, teasing me because he's, like, out and on vacation now. And he, I, we got our, each other's numbers and, like, he's saying, like, how, oh, my God, it's so great to not be in school again. And I'm like, yep. Wow, he's on vacation again? Yeah. My goodness. Okay, more power to them. Yep. So today, we're talking about shyness. Some people welcome new experiences and new people. They look forward to any opportunity to socialize. They're often the first to introduce themselves. And they jump into conversations easily. Anybody come to mind? <laughs> Your mother's very much like that. Yeah. She's much more sociable than you and I. Yep. Other people are quiet and shy and prefer to warm up slowly to new people or situations. In today's episode of Insights into Teens, we'll talk about what shyness is, why people are shy, and how to cope with shyness. But before we do that, <clears throat> I would like to invite our listening and viewing audience uh, to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens, you can find audio and video of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. And you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, pretty much any place you can find podcasts these days. Uh, I would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback, tell us how we're doing, uh, tell us show suggestions. We're always looking for new show suggestions and topics to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. On Twitter, you can hit us at insights underscore things. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we're at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or you can get us on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Are we ready? I guess we have to be. Here we go.
So what is shyness? So today's research came from kidshealth.org. Shyness is an emotion that affects how a person feels and behaves around others. Shyness can mean feeling uncomfortable, self-conscious, nervous, bashful, timid, or insecure. People who feel shy sometimes notice physical sensations like blushing or feeling speechless. You may feel shaky or just get breathless sometimes. Shyness is the opposite of being at ease with yourself around others. When people feel shy, they might hesitate to say or do something because they're feeling unsure of themselves and they're not ready to be noticed. So, reacting to new things. New and unfamiliar situations can bring out shy feelings, like the first day of school meeting someone new or speaking in front of a group for the first time. People are more likely to feel shy when they're not sure how to act, don't know how others will react, or when attention is on them. People are less likely to feel shy in situations where they know what to expect, feel sure of what to do or say, and are among familiar people. Like other emotions, shy feelings can be mild, medium, or intense, depending on the situation and the person. Someone who usually or often feels shy might think of themselves as a shy person. People who are shy may need more time to get used to the change. They might prefer to stick with what's familiar. People who are shy often hesitate before trying something new. They often prefer watching others per before joining in on a group activity. They usually take longer to warm up to new people and situations. Sometimes being quiet and introverted is a sign that someone has a naturally shy personality, but that's not always the case. Being quiet is not always the same as being shy. So you've described yourself as being introverted numerous times in the, in the past. And I think both of us know that you and I really aren't the outgoing type. Yep. You know, I, it takes me a while to get warmed up too. Do you think you're shy? Um, probably there's something there. I, I definitely think that I'm shy to some extent. How do you think you react to new things? Like they're specifically talking about unfamiliar situations or people that you don't know. What's your first reaction when you're put in a situation like that where maybe you're in a new new environment or you're exposed to new people? How do you is that something that you embrace? Do you look forward to that? Do you enjoy it or is it something that you grudgingly kind of tolerate? I grudgingly tolerate sometimes not even that. I just internally panic inside and I kind of just try to not try to stay as far out of certain situations as I can and if I have to be in those situations I normally don't say anything. So when that happens do you like can you rationalize why you feel that way what that what's causing that panic is it that you might have to speak to people you're not familiar with is there an anxiety associated with it like, what What do those feelings, where, what's the origin of those feelings when, you, when you're in that sort of situation? I feel a lot of it can kind of be the fact that I don't like new things and I have an issue talking with new people. Um, I get nervous because I don't know the person and I don't really feel comfortable talking with them. And having to be in a situation where, yeah, you got to talk with a new person. I don't really want to do that. Uh, I get nervous i don't know how to i don't really know what i should be saying in certain situations and a lot of complicated emotions can kind of run through my head at that point so is does this stem from a specific experience does it stem from you know does it stem from my reaction to people is is that sort of what sets it in or is there a is it a less rational source of anxiety that you experience I think my idea is that I don't easily trust people, uh, kind of like how you do. You don't really, like, trust the first person you see, and I don't really want to trust the first person I see. I guess a lot of it can kind of... Some instances, it might just be a fear of my own life, but obviously that's a bit more irrational in a lot of cases. Uh, other times, it's just I'm not... 
I don't feel I'm a big people person, so I may not know how to interact with a new person. Um, and again, it goes to the trusting issue. I don't really open up to just anybody, so. So have you had instances in which you've been put into an unfamiliar situation or a situation where you've had to interact with people <clears throat> and you've had a negative experience, like something... Like my thing has always been, I kind of, I envision myself doing something stupid, humiliating myself, or, you know, this irrational fear that I'm going to say something that's inappropriate, or I'm going to, someone's going to get mad at me or something like that. It, have you ever had an experience like that where you've had an interaction that may maybe triggering some of that anxiety? Uh, I think where the the best I can really think of is when I say something I didn't mean to say, mainly just embarrassing myself by like saying something stupid. One of the biggest examples I can think of is when I get an answer wrong, like when I think I know the answer and then I don't and then it's wrong and then like I embarrass myself. And that's kind of just my general consensus when I talk to new people. It's just I don't want to say something that would either be considered wrong or would just embarrass me. And, you know, it's funny you say that because I think some of the experiences <clears throat> that I've had have stemmed from situations like that. Um, like in high school, I'm the type of person who, in case you don't watch the podcast and don't know, I joke around a lot. And I'm the type of person who I deal with my anxieties through humor. A lot of times it's self-deprecating humor. A lot of times it's just something to break the ice, to alleviate things. If I can get the other person to laugh or the group to laugh that I'm with, then I feel better about it. And what I found in high school was there are times that I would say something without really thinking it through. And even after high school, it, it sounds funny in my head, but once it comes out, it might not be funny or it might be inappropriate or someone might take offense to it. And when I get that negative reaction, it causes me to shut down. Yeah, that's the thing. I can't really even rely on humor because I don't think that my mind is particularly funny or I can't really make jokes up on my own. Oh, I didn't say I was funny. Well, I know. <laughs> it's just like I don't rely on humor because I know my humor can be bad when I attempt it. And I don't think that I'd fi I find myself funny and thus I don't think other people would find me funny. So I can't even rely on that to try to alleviate the anxiety. You'd be surprised. You make a lot of a lot of very comical side comments here and there that are that are very funny. I think a lot of that can kind of just be the fact that when I'm more comfortable with somebody, I can maybe make those comments. And I think that's what it is, is that there's there's a comfort level there that we see that other people don't. Do you think your shyness holds you back from things? Do you think it, it prevents you from doing things or interacting in ways that you might otherwise want to yeah honestly the biggest example i can really think of is during marching band when we would have lunch uh my shyness would not really get me to sit at like a table with other people and like you know i'd like if i could have done that so that maybe it didn't feel i actually i would actually have more friends and i could maybe enjoy marching band a bit more but Due to my shyness, and even though I would really like to sit with somebody during lunch, uh, I'm limited and I either sit alone until my friend Carly would allow me to join their table, or I just sit alone the entire time. Now, that's an interesting point that you make there. Do you think if people would initiate that contact with you, that it would help to alleviate some of that discomfort and anxiety and you'd be more open or do you think that that would, that would, is that something that turns you off? Like, I don't like it when people approach me. Um, it's something that makes me feel kind of uncomfortable when, when, and it's that trust issue with me. Like, if somebody comes up to me and starts a conversation with me and I don't know who they are, and it happens all the time, and I don't know why. Like, if you look at me and you, you see me on the podcast, I'm not the friendliest looking person. 
you know, I'm what I tend to describe as an ogre. And there are instances that, that it scared people away and they, they leave me alone. And I'm okay with that. But there are times that I'm out in public and, and people just walk up to me and start conversations. My mother used to be the same way. And she used to love it because she was very social. But when people do that to me, it kind of puts me on guard. Is that something that would open you up more or is that something that would shut you down more? Honestly, I still kind of have a similar problem. It's like when random when people just randomly like approach me and like kind of just say hey like i get put off by that like when lucas uh first like said hi to me again after how many years we weren't really talking to each other i was put off i'm like who are you <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah i want to have people initiate the conversation but then i also don't so <laughs> Okay, so if, if it's something that you know is, is holding you back from things, is it something that if you knew how to overcome it, you would choose to do that? Or is it you're just accepting the way you are at this point in time? I think my main issue with it that I've kind of concluded is that I don't like bothering people. And I think like just asking them simple things like, hey, can I sit at lunch with you guys is bothering them. Uh, I guess I have the idea of, like, you know, the, the typical high school thing when, like, the nerd kid tries to ask the popular kids, like, hey, can I sit at lunch with you? And then they all, like, just look at you and, like, no. Or, just, like, they just... You know, just because you're number one in your class doesn't make you the nerd kid. Just for the record, it I makes know. you the smart kid. I know. Okay. Um. So, okay, I, I've got a, I think I've got a better understanding of where you're coming from here. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and we'll explore why some people are shy and why some people aren't shy. We'll be right back. All righty. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, World Boss Hunts, Star Wars Trivia, Guild Lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about shyness. And now we're going to talk about why some people are shy. Shyness is partly a result of genes a person has inherited. It's also influenced by behaviors they've learned, the ways people have reacted to their shyness, and life experiences they've had. So, when so with genetics, our genes determine phys our physical traits like height, eye color, skin color, and body type. But genes also influence certain personality traits, including shyness. About 20% of people have a genetic tendency to be naturally shy, but not everyone with a genetic tendency to be shy develops a shy temperament. So you also have life experiences that tend to play into this as well. <clears throat> when people are faced with a situation that may lead them to feel shy, how they deal with that situation can shape their future reactions to similar situations. For example, if people who are shy approach new things little by little, it can help them become more confident and comfortable. But if they feel pushed into situations they don't feel prepared for, or if they're teased or bullied, it can make them even more shy. The examples of other, pe the examples other people set can also play a role in whether a person learns to be shy or not. If the parents of a shy child are overly cautious or overly protective, it can teach the child to back away from situations that might be uncomfortable or unfamiliar. So based on that, have you had any experiences where 
you've been bullied or teased because you were shy in any situations? I don't really think I've been bullied for being shy. Um, people may have commented how I might not talk all that much, but other than that, I don't really think it's been brought up in conversation or teased about in me. Okay. So, you know, we've discussed already that there's a significant contrast between Mommy and I when it comes to shyness. Mommy's much more outgoing, much more self-confident than, than I am, and just, in general, much more friendly. Has my behavior had an influence on your shyness over the years? Uh, well, going to the overly cautious or overprotective, I kind of think you fit that mark pretty well. Oh, absolutely. Um, and not saying it's a bad thing, but it could possibly lead me to feeling that way, because again, with the overprotectiveness and the fear that something could happen if I interact with a certain person, tends to make me not want to interact with people. So I definitely think that... Your overprotectiveness and your shyness probably had an effect on how I act. So it's all my fault is what no, you're No, no. <laughs> it's not unwarranted for the most part. That's fair. That's a, that's a very fair way of saying that. Tell us about shy strength. So many people want to reduce their shyness, but people who are naturally shy also have gifts that they may not appreciate in themselves. For example, because shy people may prefer listening to talking, they sometimes become really good listeners, and what friend doesn't appreciate that? People who are shy might also become sensitive to other people's feelings and emotions. Because of their sensitivity and listening skills, many people with a shy personality are especially caring towards others and interested in how others feel. People can often consider people often consider them the finest of friends. Now, I think that is very a very poignant point to make here in that you are a good listener. Your friends come to you with problems and talk to you about things. And I think being shy for you in a lot of situations has made you a better listener, a more compassionate person, somebody who is more in tune with other people's emotions. Would you agree with that? Do you think it made you a better listener and a better friend because of that? Honestly, yeah, because even though I don't really get along with people who I just meet, if I'm able to meet somebody and actually gain a connection with them, I really st tend to listen to their conversations and I can actually have a good bond with them and then I'm able, I'm able to notice, like, if something's wrong with them, if something is is wrong, and then I'm able to let them kind of let out their feelings to me, and, you know, I can listen and, you know, help them get through it. Yeah, I think it definitely makes you more empathetic, which I, which I think is a service. It's a, it's a, it's a credit to you for that. Uh, of course, some people want to feel less shy so they can have more fun socializing or being themselves around others. If you're trying to become less shy, it can help to remember that overcoming shyness takes practice. People who are shy tend to give themselves fewer chances to practice social behaviors. It's no wonder that people who are shy, who shy away from socializing, don't feel as socially confident as those who are outgoing. They just have less practice. The more you practice social behaviors, the easier they get and the more natural they feel for you. You should also take it slow and, and take slow, steady steps. Going slow is okay, but be sure to go forward. Stepping back from any situations that might trigger you to feel shy can reinforce shyness and keep it at a level that's hard to get past. Build confidence by taking one small step forward at a time. It's also important to know that, it, that it's okay to feel awkward. Everyone does sometimes. People who are shy off are often afraid to feel awkward or uncomfortable. But don't let that keep you from doing what you want. You might feel awkward asking your crush out for a first date, which I might not have to relate to, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's perfectly natural. Whether your crush says yes or no, it's out of your control. But not asking at all means you'll never get that date, so go for it anyway, or at least, you know, get the confirmation for it. You know, that it's better than not knowing, I guess. You should also know what you can do. 
Plenty of people learn to manage their shyness, so know what you can do. So, you know, it's it's funny that they mentioned the awkwardness because I think that's why a lot of people, at least that's one of the motivations for me uh, to be shy and less outgoing is I tend to be awkward. And that awkwardness has a lot to do with a lack of familiarity with people, lack of trust. Uh, but part of it also has to do with interacting in a group. And we've talked about this before. You know, I have uh, some hearing issues where it's difficult for me to really hone in on conversations when I'm in a group setting. Yeah. Uh, it's just a bunch of noise to me. So when that sort of thing happens, I feel awkward. Like, I'll catch every third word you might say, and then you'll ask a question, and I'll be like, uh, I, 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 could you say that again? And I hate asking, like you, I don't like to inconvenience people. And I hate asking people to repeat themselves. So that's one of the other things that makes me kind of shy away from those types of situations. Do you feel awkward? Is that one of the fears that you have is feeling awkward or, or foolish or anything like that? I mean, yeah, like I said before, I don't want to embarrass myself in front of people. And in a lot of cases, when I try to make humor, that's when that happens. I hate giving wrong answers. Uh, and kind of similar with you when it comes to group settings. I feel awkward, like, especially during Thanksgiving this year. I, like, there are, were like five different conversations happening all at once. And I could not hear it for the life of me. And I just felt really awkward being in that situation. It's like, even though I knew all of them, I'm like, can I please get out of this now? I, I don't want to be here. Well, and, and that was kind of why I came out and sat with you. And, I, you know, we made a little safe space for you so that you could go and get some peace and quiet and relax. I, I know what that feels like, you know. And I, and I think having, having people have a sympathetic ear to when you're in a situation like that and carving out that safe space, you know, being able to take a step back and catch your breath and, and calm those anxieties down – and then slip back in when you get a chance. These are the small steps that they're talking about. You know, these little baby steps. And and let's admit, you know, this year Thanksgiving was far fewer people than we usually have there. Um, so I think it was it was probably a healthy way to get back into things and to, and to get back into that socializing. And I think you did the right thing. I think when you felt you were too uncomfortable. You removed yourself from that situation for a few minutes so you could kind of center yourself and, and calm down and come back in. And, and I don't think anybody really thought anything of it. And nobody thought there was a problem or anything. You know, you went off and did your thing and came back and everything was fine. But I think that's a great lesson in how to cope with something like this. You know, take that time. So we're going to take our last break and then we're going to come back and talk about when shyness is extreme and what some of the consequences of that are. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about shyness. And now we're going to talk about when shyness is extreme. Most naturally shy people can learn to manage their sh shyness so that it doesn't interfere with what they enjoy doing. They learn to warm up to new people and situations. 
they develop their friendliness and confidence and get past shy feelings. But for a few people, shy feelings can be extreme and can seem hard to conquer. When shy feelings are this strong, they prevent a person from interacting, participating in class, and socializing. Instead of warming up after a while, someone with extreme shyness has shy feelings that build into a powerful fear. This can cause a person to avoid social situations and hold back on trying new things or making new friends. Extreme shyness can make it uncomfortable and seem impossible to talk to classmates or teachers. Because extreme shyness can interfere with socializing, it can also affect a person's self-confidence and self-esteem. And it can prevent someone from taking advantage of opportunities or trying new things. Extreme feelings of shyness are often a sign of anxiety called social phobia, which our podcast next week will go into more de detail on. Yep. People with social phobia often need the help of a therapist to overcome extreme shyness. Someone with social phobia or extreme shyness can overcome it. It takes time, patience, courage, and practice, but it's worth the hard work. The payoff is enjoying more friends, having more fun, and feeling more confident. The important thing is that you should be true to yourself. We can't change our true inner nature, and who would want you to? If you have a naturally shy style, or if shyness holds you back, you might have to work at developing a sense of ease around new people. Most people find that the more they practice socializing, the easier it gets. Practicing social skills like assertiveness, which again, a podcast on, conversation, and friendly, confident body language can help people overcome shyness, build confidence, and get more enjoyment from everyday experiences. So would you say that your shyness has caused you to be uh, less participatory in class? Does it bleed into that? Well, definitely not recently, I'll say. Um, as much as I hate getting uh, answers wrong, I have actually participated in class a lot more. Uh, I know I used to really be quiet about it, and I never really would raise my hand to answer anything. Uh, but in class, in a lot of cases, I'm one of the main people that can answer questions, especially if I feel passionately about uh, the subjects. What about socializing? Has extreme shyness, or, or I don't want to say you have extreme shyness, does shyness, has shyness interfere with your socializing, participating in social activities, um, making new friends, doing things with your existing friends? Has it had an impact on that? Well, doing stuff with my existing friends, I know it hasn't affected because I enjoy being around my existing friends and I enjoy doing stuff with them. Making new friends... <laughs> I don't really know how to make new friends. I honestly say that sometimes it just happens. Like, Aaron. I never really talked to Aaron until we were in class, and I have no idea how we started talking with each other and becoming friends. But we're friends, I guess, and I don't know how it happened, um, but I can definitely... While it hasn't really stopped me inherently from making friends, I know it has stopped me from trying to... Uh, join or like directly make friends it's kind of like like honestly there's like subtle things that happen that can build up into a friendship for me it's not really direct action on my part uh but in a lot of cases it can limit like me interacting with people okay what about stuff at school so i know one of the things that we've been trying to get you into uh, has been participating in additional clubs. We've got the art club and the the tabletop gaming club and stuff like that. Has your shyness had an effect on, one, joining clubs, and two, participating in the clubs and interacting with the other students in those clubs? Has it had a negative effect on that? Well, I definitely know joining the clubs, I was very terrified. Not only... A lot of it was also due to, like, my own fear of getting my homework done, but a lot of it was also, like, I didn't really want to have to see new people, and joining these clubs, I had no idea if anybody was gonna, if I was gonna know anybody, and if I didn't know anybody, I was gonna be, like, really terrified. Um, the art club I didn't really get too much of an experience with, because my one friend, Aaron, was in the art club meeting that one day, 
uh, but, uh, but like, I didn't really know anybody else, and I didn't really have the time to socialize with anyone else, um, but the tabletop gaming one, even though my one friend wasn't there, there were some people that I actually knew, and I was actually able to interact with people who I hadn't really met before, and I was able to play games and have some fun with it. So has it been something with you where <clears throat> you're okay in a new situation if there's people you're familiar with where you'll get to know other people? Or does that still put you in a situation where it's awkward, where you're still not comfortable? Does it get more comfortable with more people that you, you know and are familiar with? Yeah, I definitely say... I definitely say it does get more comfortable with more people that I know, but even that, like, I can still be like, I don't really know. Like, I may be more opted to go to those clubs if I know my friends are in there, but I'm still, I still might not be completely on board with it. Okay. And how much has COVID and, and the restrictions and the separation and quarantine of COVID, how much has that played in maybe even fueling the social anxiety moving forward? Honestly, I definitely think the restrictions have certainly fueled my own form of social anxiety because I kind of liked remote learning. I didn't have to interact with people. I liked doing work at my own pace, and I didn't have to rely on others. And I still, like, talked with friends that I was able to talk to online, but I wasn't really missing the social interaction. So you had mentioned early on when, we, when I asked about you wanting to get over the shyness, you, you expressed an interest in wanting to. How do you go about doing it? Because obviously there are situations that you're in where you're able to overcome it or at least tolerate it or, or put it aside for a while. What are some of the things that you've done to make those otherwise uncomfortable situations bearable? Uh, I guess it's my, I guess what I've done is I try to find a common interest with a person, like, the times that I've, like, actually gone up to people and, like, wanted to interact with them, it's normally been because I found something that they liked that, found out that they liked something that I liked and I was able to use that as a talking point, because... It, like, honestly, I can, even though I don't really like talking with new people, if there's a topic that I'm able to understand and I have, like, ideas and opinions on, I'm able to ramble for, like, hours, honestly. Yes, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, if I'm able to find, so I can look for that, honestly. If I'm able to find, like, a common interest with them or, like, a common activity, we can either do that activity or talk about that, that activity and I can genuinely, like, uh get to know them and uh, interact with them. And I think there are some very good, very valid techniques of, of how to overcome some of these. What's your plan moving forward? If, you, if you're really interested in overcoming the shyness, is it more of continue down the path that we are, maybe expose yourself to more uncomfortable things to get, to get more comfortable and do that practice like we talked about earlier? Or are you looking to do something a little bit more radical than that? And what would that be? I don't know. I mean, like, we know we've got the one thing, um, the the college trip that you're going to be doing, that's going to be, you know, that's really outside your comfort zone. We had the Japan trip that you have planned that's really outside your comfort zone. So you're planning some of these really big things that, that you don't normally do that are probably going to be affected by this. And I'm curious how we're going to get you to that point where you're going to be okay and not have issues because one of those is coming up at the end of the school year. So if, if you're not making the progress in the clubs to get over some of the shyness, we're probably going to have to take some more you know, extreme measures and sort of start throwing you into social situations to get comfortable, going to school dances or maybe attending some other school events to try to start getting you used to that type of thing. I don't know. I, I, I don't really have a, a clear-cut plan. I don't know if you had any other thoughts on, on how you would get to that point. Uh, 
Well, I wouldn't just throw me in social situations. I don't really feel comfortable with that, and I'd understand, like, the whole irony of, we, we should probably be doing that, because, you know, so... <laughs> well, and I'm not suggesting that we will. I'm, I'm, yeah. That's, that's one course of action that could have detrimental effects. I guess what I'm asking is, you know you've got these milestones coming up that are going to be these socially challenging, we'll call them, situations... What's your plan to get to that point? Are you just going to stumble into them and see how it goes? I mean, that, that's another strategy, right? I mean, I think I'm going to stick with what I know for now. Because, like, I can still... I've made friends this year that I did not know before. But, like, uh, as I guess as long as I'm able to find things in common with them, uh, I, I think I should be fine. Okay. Do you think the clubs that you're participating in now are helping in that, or are they hurting in that, or are they have no effect whatsoever? They're probably going to help with that, honestly. Okay. So we'll, we'll continue down that path at least. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. I, I think that works. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, come back, get your final thoughts, and then close up the podcast. All right. All right. All right, so to everyone out there, uh, I wanted to say that shyness isn't the worst thing in the world. It's something that a lot of people can probably relate to, and again, it's different for everybody. And it's okay if you have these feelings. And again, there's plenty of po there's some positives that can come out of it. But it is important that you do make connections with people because they can ultimately it can ultimately help you later on in life. Okay. Very good thought. Uh, before we go again, I do want to once again uh, invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you can find audio versions listed as Insights into Teens. Audio and visual video of all of our podcasts can be found listed as Insights into Things. Uh, we're available on podcast uh, Pandora. We're available on podcasts. Podcasts <laughs> anywhere. Just look for podcasts. Yep. Uh, the script's too far away. That's a problem. Mm. We're available on Pandora, Castro, Stitcher, Podbean, Buzzsprout, uh, Amazon Music, and most places you can get a podcast these days. Um, and write in. Tell us how you you deal with shyness. Tell us what you think of the show do you find what we're talking about helpful do you have things you'd rather we do research and talk about on you can email us at comments at insights into things.com you can find us on instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things we do stream usually five days a week on twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things where you can get links to everything and more everything and more all those things and more. See, I'm not even reading the script. Yep. You get links to all those things and more on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, usually hosted by you and Mommy, and it's in it tomorrow, not really a monthly podcast anymore, and usually hosted by you and my brother Sam. Wow, that is advertising. You really should get a job in the marketing department. Look, you, you're giving me loops. I normally had my thing going for me, and now we're messing with the podcast. All right. We'll get back on track. Yep. So that is it for today. Uh, another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>